Hey guys, how's it going this morning? This is my first ice video of the season. I decided to make a video on tungsten jigs today and tungsten jig selection. There's so many sizes, so many colors, so many shapes that it can be overwhelming trying to figure out which jigs you need for your application. Clam Pro Tackle makes about a dozen different kinds of tungsten jigs, all kinds of colors and different configurations. And I'm gonna go over all those today, what the advantages are, what the disadvantages are. So let's go back to the garage and we can really dive in depth on these jigs and get you set up with the right one for your application. All right guys, we're back in the nice warm garage and I hope you're ready to dive deep on these tungsten jigs. We are going to start by breaking down all the parts that matter on a tungsten jig. We're gonna break down hook size and configuration. We're gonna break down weight, head size, the hook angle. We're gonna break down the color. And then towards the end of this video, we're also going to take each style of jig and go through the perfect application for that jig. I'm also gonna show you what I think is the most underrated jig style right now, and I'm gonna show you that at the very end. Now I'm gonna link all these tungsten jigs in the description below, as well as all the plastics that you see in this video so that you guys can find them very easily. So stick around, we're gonna get going on this and dive right into it. All right guys, the first aspect of jigs we're gonna get into is jig weight. The weight of tungsten, as we all know, is much heavier, much denser, and it fishes heavier for its size in millimeters. Um, this is a clam drop jig. This is a classic style jig, and this is a 32nd ounce jig. Most of your typical panfish sizes are gonna be from 1 64th ounce to about 1 16th ounce. This one's right in the middle at a 32nd ounce. That's a great size all around for bluegills, you know, perch, anything in five to 20 feet of water. That's a great all around size. If you're going a little deeper into that 25 to 30, a 16th is a great choice. And for real shallow finicky fish, you know, you might want to go up to that more like that uh, 64th ounce, but they make them all the way down to a hundredth of an ounce and all the way up to a quarter ounce. So you kind of have to, you know, use your imagination once you get into those other sizes outside the typical range, but they can definitely have their place. Going into size of the jig, oftentimes your typical tungsten jig shape, like this, this drop jig, is going to be sized in millimeters. And millimeters often correspond pretty much directly to weight, but each company may have a little bit different uh, sizes for its weight and some of them may even be uh, not sized by millimeters just because they're an odd shape. So, But your typical teardrop shaped horizontal jig like this drop jig is going to be like a three or four millimeter. That's a great size. They go even smaller and much bigger, you know, one millimeter, two millimeter size, all the way up to like six millimeter jigs, but those are getting pretty big for panfish. And uh, I would say most of our applications are between two and five millimeter jigs. That's kind of what we're using. So that kind of covers size and weight. They correlate pretty closely. Now let's get into hook size and configuration. What I have here is three clam drop jigs. They have the clam drop, the clam drop XL, and the clam drop double XL. Now these hook configurations are designed for different types of fishing and we're going to get into the application of each of these jigs later but basically the smaller the hook the easier it is to penetrate the fish's mouth but the less it's going to hold the fish once you hook it so the bigger the jig the bigger the hook the more likely your odds are of holding that fish but the less likely your odds are of hooking it so there's a balance between you know a small hook and a large hook and that's kind of that XL size but if you're fishing for fish with big plastics or fish with bigger mouths, you're probably going to want to go to that double XL size. And then live bait only and finicky fish, definitely the regular drop with that tiny little hook off the back is going to be absolutely perfect. Uh, one thing to remember with hook size, when you're fishing a drop jig like this and they're all the same weight up front, the bigger you make that hook, the farther down that hook is gonna to wanna to hang. It's not gonna to wanna to hang as horizontally because there's more weight back here and it pendulums down. So keep that in mind. The more weight you put away from the tie on that eye, you're gonna drop that hook back a little bit. So if you want a perfectly horizontal presentation, you probably wanna go with a smaller hook. All right, now let's get into shape. 
So when you take the shape of your jig into consideration, the biggest two factors are number one, you're looking at how the action of the jig actually works, and number two, the profile of the bait, what the fish are actually seeing, what that looks like, whether, whether it's an insect or a minnow or nothing they've ever seen before. So um, take this epoxy drop, for instance. This is a clam epoxy drop. It's got a, a tungsten core, but then it's got a bulbous end on it on each end that kind of extend the profile a little bit and make it look more like a bug or an insect. And then there's a little gem glued into the epoxy to give it a little bit of shine. That's a unique shape. Take the half ant, the clam half ant. That is a very insect-like shape. It's got those kind of individual sections on it like an insect would have. And that's also going to hang more vertical in the water. Totally different shape, different action. Then we go to like the dingle drop, for instance. That's got this little, this little gem at the bottom here, this little bead on a small chain. That's going to give that a different profile, different shape, different action again. Stuff as crazy as the caviar drop. That's got, uh, again, a tungsten core, but then it's got an epoxy coating on it that's made to look like a little cluster of eggs. That's going to be a totally different shape to fish that's going to resemble a different type of food. And then you've got the duck bill. I mean, that's a totally different shape. Action of that bait, it's weight heavy in the front, so that's going to hang horizontal all the time. That is an awesome little jig. So, shape again, that's going to dictate two things. Number one, the profile of the bait. Number two, the action of the bait. All right, let's get into one of the most fun things about these jigs, and that is color. Color can be totally overwhelming. Uh, there's uh, every color you can possibly imagine out there right now. I'm holding uh, an epoxy drop, a dingle drop, a snow drop, and a swirl drop, and they're all totally different colors, and they're very similar jigs. The swirl drop, as a matter of fact, is basically in a category all its own just because of the color patterns on them is, are so unique. What I like to do when it comes to color is break color down into seven different categories. Category number one would be your solid natural colors. Category number two, you're looking at your pattern natural colors. So like your perch colors, your bluegill colors, your minnow colors, and then we get into more vibrant colors. So your solid vibrant colors is, is number three. Your pattern vibrant colors is number four. And then we've got glow, we've got UV, and we've got your silvers or flashy colors. Those are the seven categories that I like to break it down into. Um, outside of that, you can go infinite directions with the patterns and colors and things like that. But those are your basic seven. So application, we're gonna go number one, solids. It gives the profile a nice clear outline natural colors it's going to be great in clear water patterned natural colors you're going to get a little bit more of a, a bait fish imitation and it's not it's going to break up the outline of it a little bit make it a little more fuzzy the same thing goes for your solid and patterns in vibrant colors except you're going to have your chartreuses your oranges um, you know bright purples stuff like that it's going to be better for you in cloudy water uh, or low visibility conditions. Um, <clears throat> and then getting into our glows, obviously nighttime, hard to beat glow. You're gonna stick out, obviously, with glow at night. But glow during the day can be underestimated as well in really dark, dingy water, uh, or super cloudy days, lots of snow cover on the ice. Anytime you've got super low visibility, glow can be a good option. But it can also scare fish away if it's too bright uh, and the fish are finicky, you may want to scale back and not use the glow if it's not working. Um, UV, lots of guys believe in UV. Uh, you know, it's been proven to catch fish over other colors at certain times. Um, it's a great option to just change things up and see if it, if, if it works. Uh, and then shiny colors, metallics, silver, copper, gold, um, brass, those colors are my go-to. I mean, in clear water, if you've got finicky fish, those colors, for whatever reason, just seem to trigger fish. They got that flash, that little bit of reflection on them. They're a great option. That's usually what I start fishing with in clear water. So that's kind of the breakdown of colors and how they work. Experiment, buy all the fun stuff, and uh, make your tackle box look pretty. It's, it's a great time picking out colors, but 
you got to know how to break them down into categories or it can be uh, very overwhelming. Okay, the last specific thing I want to go over is what are we going to be tipping these jigs with? That's a huge factor uh, in how we're going to pick these tungsten jigs. For instance, the drop kick is a perfect example of a great plastics jig. It's got a nice long hook shank. It's got that, that action, that rocking back and forth action. So when you wiggle that rod tip, it's going to make that plastic dance. The hook can be a little bit big for live bait, so it might not be the best choice for presenting like small maggots, things like that. If you're going to go that route, you probably want something more like the maggot drop, which is a semi-vertical jig. It's got a smaller hook. It doesn't have a long hook shank for hooking that plastic on there. That's a perfect one to tip with a waxy or a couple of spikes. Another one that that is really good for a small plastic would be the duckbill. And the reason that is a good plastics jig is because it's going to sit horizontal and it's also going to rock back and forth and create that wiggle that we like on plastics. And then sometimes you just want a dead stick and drop you know a minnow in there or a waxy and just let it sit. Uh, that's where this little caviar drop can be excellent. Perch are triggered by eggs, trout are triggered by eggs. So just hooking a live bait on there and letting that sit there and just move a little bit in the water, that can be really deadly. So those are all of the different you know, breakdowns of what we're looking for in a tungsten jig. Now I'm gonna take each one of these clam jigs and I'm gonna break them all down into what the best application I think those jigs are for and what they're gonna work best for you for. All right, let's start with the classic drop jig. These have been around a long time. Almost every company makes a version of these. They're the workhorse of the tungsten jig category of jigs. The reason is they fish pretty much horizontally. Uh, they've got that like 60 degree hook. So you, you've got that hook facing up to hook the fish. They have that teardrop shape so they're gonna drop fast and they're just an easy size and shape for fish to eat. The main difference on clams line of regular drop jigs again is the hook size. Uh, the bigger the hook, the bigger the plastic you're able to use on it. So what I like to, to do, if I'm fishing finicky bluegills or you know really finicky crappies and it's a live bait only bite, I'm gonna go with that regular drop jig with that smaller hook. It's gonna hook fish better. When they nibble at it, they're gonna get that hook in the mouth. If I'm gonna fish a little bit more like smaller plastics, a little more aggressive fish, um, or if I'm fishing bigger crappies, even with live bait, I'm gonna go with that XL. Just because that bigger hook gives you more purchase, you're not gonna lose as many fish once you hook them, and you can fit a little bit bigger, bulkier plastic on there. For those guys ripping big plastics, aggressive jigging, you know, big crappies, big perch, trophy fish, that's when you wanna to go to that XXL hook on that drop jig, and that's gonna give you the ability to really fish that hard, get a big profile on there, and keep those fish hooked. That's a great choice for that application. All right, now here I've got two variations of the drop jig series. One's the dingle drop and one's the snow drop. And I think what these really do is they give you an edge in, in super pressured areas. That little dingle on there can just add a lot of uh, motion and stuff the fish aren't used to seeing. And that crystallized coating on the snowdrop can do the same thing. Looks totally different than what the fish are used to seeing. Either of those are going to be great choices when you're fishing in a big crowd of people and want to stand out. Alright, now we're going to get into drop kick jigs. These are a hybrid sort of uh, copy of the drop jig. Similar, you know, similar shape, but they're a little boxier. And what that's going to do for you, especially in deeper water, is, well, it's two things, but in deeper water, it's going to give you a really good return off your flasher or your sonar uh, with that flat top on it. Um, so you're going to be able to see that jig really, really well. The second thing is, these are designed by Dave Gens to rock back and forth. When you get that motion just right, that plastic is really going to work. These are one of the best plastics jigs out there. These things are killer. You want to throw uh, any kind of plastic on them. They're going to make that thing dance. You can certainly switch it up, tip them with live bait. They kind of have that XL hook shape. So, you know, you can you can certainly fish live bait on them. But definitely my favorite, one of my favorites when it comes to fishing plastics. 
All right, the next configuration of jig I want to go over is the vertical jig. Now these jigs have been around since way before horizontal jigs. Uh, when I was a kid, all we used was vertical teardrops. That was the standard go-to for ice fishing, but um, they still work. And here we have the clam maggot drop and the clam half ant, and those are both true vertical jigs. Vertical jigs are awesome for presenting a smaller profile. You probably heard Jason Mitchell talk about this in a couple videos, but he talks about, and I agree with them completely, when that jig is hanging vertical like that and the fish are coming up at it, which they often do, they don't see that big giant tungsten profile. They're just seeing the bait below it. Uh, so it looks like a smaller package for them and doesn't move as much water when you move it up and down. It's more streamlined. So what I like to do when I'm fishing these these vertical jigs for finicky fish is I either fish live bait with them, which certainly works. If I'm going to fish these with plastic, something like this Euro Tackle Plankton or this uh, Clam Jamie, I'm going to hook them horizontal on those hooks so that when the jig hangs vertical, the baits are going to hang horizontal and hide the jig above them. And all those fish are going to see is that Plankton or that Jamie just wiggling in the water right in front of them and they're going to come up and suck that in and you're going to have a fish. I'd say vertical jigs are definitely my go-to when fish get really finicky. Another jig style that's really cool and it's kind of uh, newer in the market is epoxy jigs. So especially the epoxy drop um, and then also to an extent the swirl drop. They both got a gem in the front to create some shine and then they've gotten an epoxy coating on them. The caviar drop would also be included. But the, the epoxy gives them a unique shape that just tungsten alone isn't going to give you. And um, it does one more thing, especially on a thick epoxy jig. It's going to slow the drop rate slightly. So as that jig drops, it's not going to drop quite as fast as a solid tungsten jig. And it's going to have a bulkier profile than most for the weight, uh, which is an advantage in certain situations. Fish in shallow weeds, stuff like that. You want a big glowy profile with a bunch of color to attract attention, but you don't want that thing to drop like a rock. That's what where the epoxy drop shines. And while we're on the subject of epoxy jigs, I think this little caviar drop is a totally underrated live bait dead stick lure. It just gives it that extra attraction of eggs. Back hook a minnow and let it swim with that egg on the back, or just drop it and let it sit with a maggot. That is a trout magnet that's a panfish perch magnet I think it's a great dead stick tool and uh, you shouldn't overlook that for a nice set line setup all right moving on to the ant drop the ant drop is a very unique jig and it's got more of a semi vertical profile to it I really like this one for finesse presentations of live bait you get those big bulbous sections on it look super insect like you can put a couple of waxies or a couple of spikes on there or just a single and it really makes them dance you get the insect profile in there it's just a super great bait for finicky fish in pressured water or when they just don't want to bite all right what jig have we not covered so far which one is the most underrated jig style in my opinion it is the duckbill I've got this one rigged up with a clam necky which is just a little basically collar of tentacles and then a Euro tackle bloodworm off the back. And when you see this in the water, I, I think I'm showing a Mackie on there, clam Mackie on the underwater shot. But when you see that thing dance in the water, you'll see exactly what I mean. That bait really makes plastics move and it always stays horizontal. And I really like that shape of it. It's got that super sticky little hook in the back for even finicky fish. That is a really underrated panfish jig right there. I'm going to be fishing it more this season for sure, uh, especially for plastics just after seeing it move in the water. Um, that is going to be one of my go-tos I have a feeling from now on. Well, if you're still here, thanks for sticking with me to the end. Hopefully that really gives you a picture of what's available and what's actually going to help you in your particular situation this winter when chasing panfish and trying to choose a tungsten jig. If you want to see more on how I actually use these jigs in the field and while I'm out on the ice, check out one of the two videos at the end of this one right here and uh, you can see how I apply these on the ice in certain situations. 
Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the ice. Get hooked up.